We are now in the final question, the question number 21, which is the last question in the writing part. It is to perform operations with complex numbers. The first part, you know, just to find x and y value is easiest among all the writing questions. Here we have an equation and you can see i symbol. That's i means it's imaginary number. Now, how do you solve it is we need to make this equation true. So whatever the coefficient of i is the imaginary part and whatever is the other things, they are the real parts. So you can write real part and solve it up. What is the real parts? It is 9 and equal to symbol and 3x. What is the imaginary? We are just like how we have written real part, write the imaginary. Left side is 12i, then there's equal to and 4y. Now, one thing, do not write i. It's understood it's imaginary already, isn't it? So just write this much. Now, we equate it and solve it. Divide both the sides by 3. You will get 3 over here equals x. What about this? Divide both the sides by 4. 4, 3 is at 12. So it's again 3 equals y. The answer is x equals 3 and y equals 3 itself. So that's the answers. Just like that, you can solve any problems. Now, over here, the imaginary part is 2y and minus 6. All the terms without the i are real part. x plus 1 in the left side and 3 in the right side. Easily can solve it up. Let's solve this one as well. Now, over here, the real part is the real part 2x plus 7. That is equal to minus 4 on the right side. Whereas the imaginary is the coefficient 3 minus y equals 6. Now we are to solve it up. Take this, uh, take the 7 to the other side. It will be 2x is equal to negative 7 minus, sorry, negative 4 minus 7. Uh, 2x will be equal to negative 11. Divide both the sides by 2. You will get negative 11 by 2. That is equal to 5.5. It's minus 5.5, sorry. Now here you take the y to the other side because it's negative, isn't it? So bring the 6 to the other side becomes 3 minus 6 equals y minus 3 equals y. This is the answer here and this is the answer. You can keep the answer in terms of fraction or decimal, it's fine. Here in the sample answer it's fraction but you can write a decimal as well. And now here it's the same method. Please do check the solution for this. Try it by yourselves and then look into the solution. Now we will go to the next type of problems. These are the simple ones. Now we have to simplify. Simplify. These are, this is a huge term, right? Not huge term. There are just four terms. We need to try and condense it as much as possible. How do we simplify is we need to add these two terms. So add the real parts up together. It will be 6 plus 4. This is real. Plus what is the imaginary part? It is 1 minus 5, you can write it as i. And this would be 6 plus 4 is 10. 1 minus 5 would be minus, so I've directly written minus 4i. Now you can just uh, differentiate the real part like this by brackets, imaginary by brackets, and that would be the answer. This is also a very simple problem, and you can see it's 10 minus 4i. Please do solve these by yourselves. Very straightforward. Solve the real parts and the imaginary parts. You can just check the answers over here. 8 minus. Now, here there's minus sign outside the bracket. So remember, this minus is distributed to both the terms. So what happens is it'll be 8 minus 6. That's 2. And plus 3 plus 2. Why? Because minus and minus becomes plus. It'll become 5i. But you need to write in details if this comes for exam. Do the real part separately, imaginary part, and then solve it up. Same thing here. Try them by yourselves. Here, again, it's very straightforward problems. And now we move on to another type of problem that is multiplication. Now, by now, you must be thorough with these problems. Now, here, you just can't do real part multiplication, imaginary part. No, it doesn't work like that because this is, you know, like A plus B. A, um, you can take it as C Maya plus D. What do you do? You do distribute your property, isn't it? So we need to multiply the first term with both and the second term with both. We do the same thing here. 2 times 3, it's 6. 2 times minus i will be minus 2i. 
then i times 3 will be plus 3i and lastly plus i minus i is minus i squared. Now here we need to know the values of i. You know i is equal to square root of negative 1 imaginary number. What is the square of i? i square would be square the square root you will have minus 1. What is i power 3? You have three i's together but you know i square this i3 can be written as i squared times i, isn't it? But we know i to the power 3 is minus, um, i to the power 3 can be written like this, but i to the power 2 is minus 1. So instead of all this, you just write minus i. And what about i power 2? Now, i power 4, my bad. It can be written as i squared times i squared. We know i squared is minus 1 times minus 1. This will make 1, and that's the answer. And you can continue further, but it starts repeating. i to the power 5, you know, i power 4 is 1. So 1 remains, that is i itself. Now what is i power 6? Remove 4 from it. 6 minus 4 is 2, so it's equal to 2. You can keep on splitting it out like this. i power 7 would be minus i, i power 8 would be 1, i power 9 would be i, and so on. And this is just for more detail. Here now you just have i squared. So i squared becomes minus 1 here and this minus and minus becomes plus. It will be 6. Minus 2 plus 1 is plus i and over here it will be plus 1. 6 plus 1 is 7 plus i. This would be the final answer. Now you don't need to write this but you need to write each term. You can do one thing. You can do 2 times 3 as a step. See first the distributive property over here. 2 times 3 minus 2 times i plus i times 3 minus i times i and then you can write it just do all the steps in detail so the answer is 7 plus i same thing here please do the distributive property and solve it up you can see over here each steps are mentioned easily you can solve it up now even this is pretty simple now we will try to see the other type of problems. 34th is kind of a real world problem. Using the formula V equals Ci, find the voltage in a circuit when current is given over here, C minus J uh, amps. And the impedance, that's the resistance, is I equals 3 plus 2J. Now J is the imaginary part and the real part is the numbers. You need to find the voltage. Voltage is given as Ci. What is C? C is given as 3 minus J multiplied with I is given as 3 plus 2J. That's it. Now multiply them up. It will be 3 times 3 is 9. Now you can write detailed step. I'm just doing it directly. Plus 6J minus 3J minus 2J squared. And now here it is 9 plus 6 minus 3 would be plus 3j and over here j squared we had seen just a while ago i squared equals negative 1. So it is minus 2 times minus 1 it's plus 2 so the answer here would be 11 plus 3 times j that is the imaginary part. 11 is the real part so that would be the answer that many voltage volts is the unit. Now we are coming to the division, the last part. So here we need to know something called conjugate. Conjugate means if you have a plus b, the conjugate would be a minus b. Just swap this term. Now if you have say a minus 3, the conjugate would be a plus 3. Opposite sign. Now here we need to multiply and divide by the conjugate. The conjugate of the denominator only, not above. Numerator is not included, only the denominator's conjugate. It will be 3 minus i divided by 3 minus i. Why do we do this? Here, so we can simplify this, we can work with something. Now here at the right side, if you look, we are dividing, multiplying and dividing by the same number. So it cancels out to be 1, isn't it? So we are just manipulating the equation. There is nothing wrong in this. Here, the denominator, the denominator is, uh, it can be done like this. A plus B, A minus B is there, right? We can use the power, uh, use the rule of 
a square minus b square. If you're getting confused with this rule, you can just multiply it. a times a is a square, a times b is a minus ab, then it'll be plus ab, and lastly minus b square, and the middle terms cancel because it's plus and minus, you will have a square minus b square. You can remember this formula directly. Here it'll be helpful because 3 plus i, 3 minus i will be 3 squared minus i squared. And then up above, we just write them out together, 3 times 3 minus i. Now at the left side, now what happens? See, why do we do this in the first place? Why do we multiply and divide by the conjugate? Now when we use this rule over here, this i squared is dissolved. Imaginary part is gone. Only in the numerator we have imaginary. In the denominator, it will be a number now. See, it becomes 5 times 3 is 15 minus 5 times i is minus 5i divided by 3 squared is 9 minus of minus 1. So we have 15 minus 5i. That is 9 minus of minus is plus, so it will be 10. Now what you can do is, you can divide this. Uh, what you can easily do is take the phi common out over here. So phi number is common. So it will be out of 15, phi is gone. So divide this by phi, it will be 3 minus i divided by 10. Now cancel this one time, two time. So you will have 3 minus i by 2. This is the final simplified form. You can see that would be the answer. Okay. Now I forgot to do one more step. You, you can leave it. That's the correct answer itself. But here they have just divided this 2 again. You can do the real part separate. 3 by 2 minus i by 2. This is correct. 1 by 2 i or minus i by 2. So this is, you know, the real part and imaginary part is separated. You can always stick to the last, this method as well. Because here we are splitting it into two separate forms. That is A plus BI form. That is the general form of imaginary number, complex numbers, sorry. Complex numbers means a real number and an imagined number. That's it. So that is how we solve it up. Here all the methods are there. Now the last two questions, but these are much simpler than the previous question because there is no two terms in the denominator. So we don't have to multiply and divide by conjugate. Now how do we solve this? You can just split this denominator separately. It will be 7 by 2i minus 13i by 2i. Now remember, this is 7 by 2, i can be written just like an imaginary part. We're not going to write in denominator, numerator, it doesn't make, uh, it doesn't make any difference. But here now it cancels off. You might be thinking, okay, it's in the denominator, how can you write in the numerator? For a minute, let's understand what is i. i is an imagined number, it's not defined, you know, it's square root negative 1, this cannot be defined. What is i squared? It is negative 1 i cube is again minus i and lastly i to the power 4 is 1. So if you have minus 1 in the denominator or numerator, will it make any difference? It's just going to change the sign. That's it, right? Now what about i to the power 4 in the numerator or denominator? It doesn't make any difference. So you keep on writing this further on. It's just going to repeat. So it doesn't matter if it is i we don't write root of negative 1, we just leave it as i. If it's i cubed, we leave it as just negative. It's just the sign that changes, that's fine. So this is the imaginary part, this is the real part. We generally tend to write in this form, a plus b i, the form of complex numbers. The real part will be written first, 13 by 2 plus the imaginary part is 7 by 2 i. You can write it in decimal, that is 6.5 plus 3.5 i. That's the answer. You can see over here. That's how, okay, they have written in fraction, but that's fine. You know, we have just written in uh, both the forms. So that is how we can do it. And um, remember the signs and just be careful. The i divided by this goes off. Imagine number goes off. It becomes a real part. Same thing here. You just divide by 3i on both the sides. This left side becomes... 6 uh, six by 3, that is 2i imaginary part. Whereas the right side, it's 5 by 3 only. That's the real part. Please try solving all the problems by yourselves. I wish you all the best in your studies. 
I hope the exam goes well and easy. Please do practice more and more problems by yourselves. Please do subscribe to my channel and do share my videos with your friends. If you have any doubts, any uh, questions, please post them in the comments. and I'll get back to you very soon. Wish you all happy learning and all the best.